Now go to Luke, St. Luke again, chapter 1, and you can see why I'm constantly, because what I'm doing, I'm hitting some things this morning. I'm hitting your spirit. In St. Luke, chapter 1, look at verse 37. The word is your power. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Verse 38, and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Notice here, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Well, look at verse 37 right quick out of the Amplified right quick. He said, for with God, nothing is ever impossible and no word from God shall be without power or impossible or fulfillment. Let me read that again. Verse 37. For with God, come on, shout with me, with God, with God. nothing is ever, is ever impossible. impossible and no word from God no word from God no word from God no word from God watch this watch this watch this shall be without power no word from God you can't get a word from God that is not already pregnant with fulfillment. There is no word from God that is without power or impossible of fulfillment. No word. If you don't hear nothing else I say today, you make sure you get this in your heart. No word from God. No word from God is without power. I can't get a word from God that is already powerful. What you mean? It has the ability to control, to influence, and dominate. Any word I get from God already have within it the ability, the ability to control, to dominate, to influence, any word from God. So I don't care how old a child is. That child can be five years old. If that child get a word from God, that five-year-old is walking around with pregnant with a vision that has the power within itself to fulfill, to control, and to dominate. Because no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. But notice what she said here. Notice what Mary said. Be it unto me according to your word. In other words, Lord, let it happen. In other words, I yield my will to your will. Because even though that's your plan for me, even though that's a promise from you, even though I, this word is full of power, if I don't yield my will to it, even though it is the will of God, I can stop the will of God for my life by not willing my will to it. Are you with me here? No word from God. Be it unto me according to your word. In other words, okay, Lord, I, let it happen. Let it happen, God. I Watch this. I trust you for it to happen. I believe you, even though I've never been with a man. But if you say it, I'm going to have a child. Be it unto me. According to your word. See, see, you think about this now. Notice, Mary got her mind out of it. She got her thought process out of it. This is very critical because one thing that has hindered and can hinder our progress is you getting your mind involved. Trying to figure it out. Trying to understand it. Trying to comprehend it. You trying to help God do it. Oh, be it unto me, according to your word. Now watch this in verse 45. Watch this, verse 45. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Shout with me, I got to trust God. Come on, say it again. Notice, he said, blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. 
Now God is obligated to get on the scene. God is obligated now to perform his word because what he needed from her, first of all, was her will. He needed her, God needed her to first of all believe him and trust him that he'll do it. The next thing God needed from her was his will, her will to let him do it through her. There are some things God needs your will before he can do through you. Because if he can't get it through you, he can't get it to you. He needs for you to be willing to say, God, I'm willing. Lord, I'm willing. I open myself up. I don't know how you're going to do it, but Lord, I'm letting you know right now that I trust you and I'll give my will to your will. Whatever you tell me to do, Lord, I'm willing to do it. Whatever you tell me to go, I'm willing to go. How you want me to handle this thing, God, I will handle it however you want me to handle it because I've been doing it my own way and let me see right now, it ain't got me any further, so let me yield my will to you and and God, you tell me how you want me to do this thing. Are you with me here? And he will show you exactly how to do it. Let's go a little further. Go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. The word is your power. Psalm 103. The ability to get results. The ability to influence. Control. To dominate. How can, this thing, how can this thing change? Instead of me trying to do it, there is an ability. There is an ability that comes from God through his word that has the power in itself to control, to dominate, to influence. Are you with me here? In Psalm 103, look at verse 18 right quick. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 103. Look at verse 18. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to what? Do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. His kingdom rules over all. Everything about the kingdom of God can't be stopped by man. His kingdom rules over all. Nothing can stop the kingdom. That's why when Jesus came to earth, Jesus was giving you and I a, a, a look and a glimpse into when a man walked with God and what he can accomplish. I said when Jesus walked the face of the earth, he was showing you and I a picture on what it is if a man and a woman is walking with God and what they can accomplish. Notice, nothing could stop Jesus. Nothing could stop. The only thing that stopped Jesus were their unbelief. Their unbelief, their, their willingness not to believe who he was. But anything other than that, it couldn't stop him. Why? He had the ability, the power, and the control on him to influence, to control, and to dominate. He walked in power. Good God Almighty. Watch this. Just bear with me. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto what? The voice of his word. Bless you, the Lord, all his hosts, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Look at verse 20 again. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do do his commandment. He's talking about the angelic beings. Notice he said they do. They do. Angels, they respond. What do they respond to? They respond to what? What do they respond to? What do they respond to? I heard somebody say it. The what? What do they respond to? They respond to the not just the word because they don't just act on any word. They respond to the voice. They respond to the voice. What voice? The voice of his word. Shout, with, shout this with me. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I, shall not want. I shall not want. Shout this with me. My God, my God shall, supply shall supply all my needs. All my needs. Shout this with me. Great is, the peace of my children. Great is the peace of my children. 
Shout this with me. The Lord shall increase me. The Lord shall increase me. More and more. Me and my children. Shout this with me. I am anointed with fresh oil. Angels hearken to the voice of his word. Angels move because what I just said. You missed that. You missed that. You missed that. You missed that. You, you, you missed that. You missed it. You missed it. By you saying what you just got through saying, your mind had nothing to do with it. You put voice to his word. All he needed for you to do is just put voice to the word. Don't think about how it's going to happen. Don't try to figure out when it's going to happen. All he needs for you to do is put voice to the word. And if you put voice to the word, there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. All he need for you to do is put it in your mouth. There's some things I just got to put in my mouth. Woo! I'm arguing over something I just need to put in my mouth. I'm stressed out over something that just need to be put in my mouth. I can't even go to sleep when I just need to put something in my mouth. And there shall be a performance of those things which I told her from the Lord. If you were not here Wednesday night, I encourage you to get that seat, get that CD. Go to bed, get up, go to bed, get up, Mark 4 says. Sleep and rise night and day, and the seed shall spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. In other words, God said, don't wonder about how it's going to happen. You just keep it in your mouth. That's what your fight is over. Your fight, your battle, your warfare over putting the wrong thing in your mouth. Because if Satan can get the wrong thing in your mouth, then the wrong thing will be in your life. But if I could put the right thing in my mouth, the right thing will be in my life. That's what your battle is over. That's what all the warfare you're over is having. Everything that's coming at you is over you not putting power in your mouth. Satan knows when a believer puts the word in his mouth. He is over. He can't stop it. So what he got to do is get you so frustrated, get you so aggravated, get your life so clouded with disruption that the wrong thing will be in your mouth. The word of God is quick. It is powerful. It is what? Sharper than any two-edged sword. The Amplified said the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Shout with me again. I have the ability to influence, to control, and to dominate. I'm having you to constantly repeat this this morning because I, I want you to get this in your spirit that you got to say something. And you just can't say anything. You can't say how you feel. You can't say what it looked like. You can't say what's been going on. That's not power. What's going to be power is when I put the power, which is this word, in my mouth. Hallelujah. Angels hearken. They respond to the voice of his word. So if angels respond to the voice of the word, guess what else responds to the voice of the word? Demons respond to the voice of the word. Mountains respond to the voice of the word. Challenges respond to the voice of the word. Disease respond to the voice of the word. Lack respond to the voice of the word. All confusion respond to the voice of the word. So if I'm go if anything going to change, it has to be voice in the word that's going to change it. Because that's where my power is. Hallelujah. Can we go a little bit further here? Go to St. John chapter 1. The word is your power. St. John chapter 1. But I got to trust the process. I got to trust it. Because what if it don't change tomorrow? What if it don't change next week? Even when I'm saying what God told me to say. What if it don't change within a year? What if it don't change 
overnight. I have to trust the process because no word from God is without power or impossible of fulfillment. So that's what I got to root myself in. In knowing the fact that if God said it, it's got to happen. What, I, what will help me is move out of the time area. Because if I'm so locked in on days and weeks and months, if I'm so locked in on hours and minutes, that's what will wear me out quicker. Because I'm looking at my clock and wondering why it hadn't happened by now. Now I'm trying to bring God, which is an eternal, into time. God does not operate in time because he's eternal. A day is a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day in eternity. God don't know time. We operate time because we live in earthly, we, we live in time zones. But God who is not in a time zone, God is in the eternal zone. So eternal zone is not controlled by time zone. But time zone can be influenced by the eternal zone. Good God Almighty, boy. I'll... St. John chapter 1. Look at verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them which believe on his name. But as many as received him. But as many as received him. Look what Amplified, verse 12 in the Amplified. He said, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right to become the children of God. Let's read it again. But to as many as did receive him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, and right to become wealthy. But to as many as did receive him, he gave, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right to become whole. To as many as receive him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right to become stronger than ever. But as to as many as receive him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, and right to become peacemakers, dominators, controllers, influencers, in the earth, but to as many as receive him, but as to many as receive him. When you received him, you received power. Is there any born again believers in here today? Come on, talk to me. Is there any born again believers in here today? Is there any born again believers in here today? I said, is there any born again believers in here today? Watch this, watch this. When you received him, he in return gave you power, authority, privilege, and rights to become anything that you ever want to be. Anything that you ever want to accomplish. Anything that you want to achieve. When you received him, you received the power, the privilege. Watch this, watch this. Buckle your seatbelt, the right. That's the area I got to deal with is the right area. Because condemnation try to make you feel like you don't have a right. Where you come from try to make you feel like you don't have a right. The different things that you've done in your life try to make you think you don't have a right. Just because you don't quote scriptures like somebody else try to make you feel like you don't have a right. You may not have gone to church every week like somebody else have, and that try to make you think you don't have a right. You may not pray like somebody else can pray, and that try to tell you you don't have a right. You don't do what somebody else do or have done what somebody else have done, and that try to make you think you don't have a right. But I'm here to announce to you, I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. 
I don't care what has happened in your life. I don't care how far down you feel like you've been. When you receive him, everything changes. He gives you the power, the privilege, and the right. High five somebody and tell them, I got this thing, man. I got it. I got it. I got it. I may not fit up to your status. I may not fit up to your standards. I may not can qualify to you, but he already qualified me. He already signed off on what I can do. I don't need the approval of a man to try to dictate who I am. I've already been qualified. Shut up, I've already been qualified. He gave, he gave, he gave, he gave. Yeah, y'all already got it. Well, I don't think, what? You didn't give me the power, the privilege, and the right. So what makes you think your opinion has anything to do with the outcome of my life? What makes you think that your opinion has that much influence and control and over me that your opinion can alter my course? But to as many as received him, The point I'm trying to make is you understanding when you got hooked up to Jesus, you got hooked up to everything. That's all I'm trying to show you. All I'm trying to show you, your past have nothing to do with your future. Your failures have nothing to do with your your destiny. What you feel like you may not have done, what was not properly right, have no, no, no kind of influence or bearings on how far you can go now because you're in Christ. Now it's about how I see myself now. How do I see me now? Are you with me here? So he gave me the power, the influence, and the right. That's why Mary said, be it unto me. Because I can't do this on my own. But be it unto me. You're going to have to do this. If you're telling me I'm going to have a child and never been with a man, you're going to have to do this. But be it unto me, according to your word, there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. What did the Lord tell you? Did he tell you how you were going to walk in his blessing? Did he tell you? And I gave you three, th- three ways the words the Lord speaks to us. He speaks through the written word. He speaks through the rhema word. And he speaks through the spoken word, meaning spiritual authority. Anytime you have a written word, anytime you have a rhema word, a rhema word is a word that speaks directly to you. Now, what's vitally about the rhema word is this. The rhema word, everybody else didn't hear it. Only you heard it. So it's important for you to understand when you get a rhema. A rhema is that word that lights up in you. That you see something that you've never seen before. That rhema, when you hear a rhema, that rhema changed the room. That rhema lightens everything up in you. It's the light bulb come on when you get a rhema. You hear something, even though I'm saying one thing, but you heard something else. That rhema is a word that goes off in your spirit and it lights up in you. You say, man, I can see that thing now. They was talking about one thing, but you caught something else. You watching TV and one commercial came on, but then the light bulb came on and you seen something totally different than what was on the TV. That was a rhema. God was speaking directly to you. But here's the the thing with rhema. You got to protect the rhema word. Because the rhema word, everybody didn't hear it but you. So that rhema word may go against everything that you've always heard. It may go against everything you've always known. That rhema word may separate you from your best friend. Because if you don't protect that rhema word, 
you could try to get somebody else to hear and see what God only spoke to you about. That rhema word, that rhema word will cause you to make some decisions. Because that rhema word, when God speaks something to you and you trying to get somebody else to understand what God spoke to you, God, no, it's not meant for them to understand what God speaks to you. That's why you got to know that when it comes to a rhema word, you got to protect that. You can't share that with the crowd. You can't share that with everybody. Everybody don't need to hear your rhema. Rhema wasn't for everybody. It was for you. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. But when it comes down to the rhema, I just can't share it with everybody. I got to protect that. Because if I share it with the wrong person, they can talk me out of what God is telling me. And I believe that that's where we are. We're letting too many people talk us out of what God is saying to us. And you're wondering why things is not happening. It's because it ain't the, the devil's hindering it. No, no, no. I let my rhema be out loud where everybody else can hear it. And what it done, it caused me not to trust it no longer. So now I'm backing up and I'm no longer sticking with the process. Because, because it seems as if this is crazy. Because you mean to tell me, you, you know, God told you to do that? Shoot, you better than me because I couldn't be doing all that. You, you know what, God, I don't think I, because you told something to somebody who don't even believe in the God that you believe in. And God spoke that to you because that rhema word to you was the breakthrough for your generation. And he has a time frame when he going to bring it. He has a time frame when he going to do it. But because it hadn't happened in a time frame that you were like, you thought that you could share something precious who was for just you and God to somebody who you thought that was your friend but the proof is when they begin to talk you out of what you know God told you that's the proof right there you can't really be my friend because if I told you that the Lord told me and you can't be supportive of what God told me then, oh, oh, oh come on talk to me talk to me folks talk to me if, if, if I can't support what you said God told you, if I try to get you to back up and not continue in what God told you, I got to look at what spirit I'm not operating in. Preach, Pastor Stevenson. Jesus just preached. And said, who do men say that I am? Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Other Jeremiah is one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. Rhema, rhema, rhema. But my father, which is in heaven. And upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter, you done got a hold of something. As they went on, Jesus began to preach about and talk about how he must go to the cross. Peter spoke up filled with joy. Lord, you can't do that. He turned around. Satan, get thee behind me. Wait a minute. Hold on. One minute, you just praised him. The next minute, you rebuked him. And you called him Satan. He turned around and said, Peter, you don't know what spirit you are. Because you are talking. You're saying something that wasn't it's the spirit of God. More we, we, you can be motivated by the devil, don't even know it. Inspired to speak things that not even realize what it's rooted in. And Jesus turned around and said, Satan, I rebuke you. Because, watch this, watch this. Jesus knew he had to go to the cross, man of God. And any voice that's trying to detour him from going to the cross couldn't be the voice of God. You got to know the voices that is trying to detour you from obeying God. What voice is being spoken into your ears trying to get you to disobey what God has already told you? Whew. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this here. God, watch this here. Watch this here. Which were born of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Shout with me. The word of God, the word of God. Is, is the will of God. Notice here, Jesus, notice here, verse 12 again. He said, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let me, let, come on, let me slow it down here for a few minutes, because we got to take you somewhere. Watch this, what he said here. Which were born, not of the will of blood, not of the will of flesh. Not even of the will of man, but of the will of what? So you see three wheels there. There's actually four wheels there. You got the will of God. You got the will of blood. You got the will of flesh. And you got the will of man. Be it unto me according to your word. The will of God. What is the will of blood? The will of blood is blood association. That because of blood association, everything's flowed within blood association. The will of the flesh. What is the will of the flesh? The will of the flesh, the flesh has a mind of its own. When the flesh chooses not to do the will of God, then you got the will of man. In other words, man has his own will. And because man has his own will, that has, that, that's a whole separate thing all by itself. So you can be born again with the will of blood, will of the flesh, and the will of man. Now all of those three, watch it, is fighting against the will of God. You got three forces coming against one. That's why when you're in the will of God, I got to get rooted in it. Because the will of God will always empower me and sustain me to overcome the will of the blood, will of blood, will of flesh, and will of man. Jesus' brothers and sisters stood outside while he was in the temple preaching and teaching. They said, your brothers and your mother and your brothers are standing without desiring to speak with thee. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Except they who do the will of my father. The will of blood. They stood on the outside with the, ex with the mindset that just because there was his blood they didn't have to come in. They didn't have to do what everybody else did. They, they, they could stand outside because there was his blood. They didn't have to hear what everybody else heard to hear because it was his blood. So Jesus had to make a separation just because you my blood, except they who do the will of my father. Because Jesus understood he can't bow down to flesh and blood. Because if he bowed down to flesh and blood, he just opened himself up to obey the flesh of man and obey his own flesh. Some things I'm struggling with is because I'm too connected to things I shouldn't be too connected to. Have I made a soul tie to someone who I don't need to be a soul tie to? Because if I made a soul tie, then that soul tie, watch this, is influencing my thinking, is influencing my action, is influencing my commitment to God. Hallelujah. Are you with me here? Which we're born. Watch this here. Watch this. And the word was made flesh. The word was what? Made. made flesh. That word that you hold on to have to take on flesh form. It has to come. It has to come. Any word that you hold on to must take on flesh. Meaning become Whatever it is, the word was made flesh. But I got to trust the process. Mary had to trust the process. 
She had to trust the process. Abraham had to trust the process for 25 years. Isaac had to trust the process. What you mean had to trust the process? Everybody else was going down to Egypt for provision. God told Isaac, stay here in famine. Stay here in a land that nothing is bearing fruit. Stay here. What, huh? Stay here in a land that's not bearing fruit. Everybody else is going down to Egypt. Everybody else getting getting the grapes. Everybody they, they getting everything. But God, you telling me to stay here in a land that's not barren? No, I'm talking about a barren land that is dry. He got a rhema. God told him to stay there. Then God told him, plant here. God told Isaac to do something. What was naturally impossible. God told Isaac to do something that's crazy to the natural mind. How can you sow in a ground that's dead? But when God speaks, because the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any any two edges, the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. It's dead now, but once that word hit it, it's going to come alive. Stay here and sow in this land. And the same year, Isaac received a hundredfold. He got more in a place than everybody else who went down to Egypt. They went down to Egypt, watch this, but they became dependent upon Egypt. Egypt had control on how much they received. God told Isaac to stay here so that it puts God in control of how much Isaac can receive. This is what God is trying to do. He's trying to shift us from depending on what we've been so accustomed to depending on to start depending and trusting in him, the God of more than enough. The God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask a thing. He wouldn't have ever told us that he's the God of the exceedingly if he wasn't ready to perform the exceedingly in your life. But he's training us to shift courses. Not to become so dependent on what we can do. And start trusting in the God that is more than enough. But in order to do that, I got to work the process, meaning the word, because the word is my power. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Hallelujah. See, we're breaking through right now. I said, we're breaking through right now. There are some things you've been pondered on and meditating on and thinking about that's been so discouraging and they tried to bombard your mind. I'm here to announce to you today that your day of visitation is here. I said, your day of visitation is here. The God of more than enough, the God of the turnaround is ready to visit your house right now. I said, the God of more, come on, shout with me, the God of more than enough. Is already in my house. house. Come on, the God of more than enough enough. is already in my house. Come on, prophesy to somebody next to you. The God of more than enough enough. is already already in your house. house. Come on, point at somebody else real quick. The God of more than enough. The God of more than enough is already in your house. He's ready. He's waiting. He's waiting for the voice. He's already in the house, but he needs a voice. Hallelujah. Angels need a voice. They waiting on you to talk. They waiting on you to speak. Hallelujah. I'm about ready to tear something up up here, man. But if I mess up the carpet, I know Deacon could he, you know, mess with the carpet, boy. You know, Deacon play with this carpet. <laughs> the God of more than enough. He's already in your house. And he's waiting. Angels hawking to the voice. 
of his word. I said angels hearkening to the voice of his word. But pastor, that just don't sound right. See, I'm in my mind. I'm in, I'm in my head. I'm in my head. I'm in my head. I'm in my head. I got to get out of my head and get in my mouth. I'm in my head, but I got to get out of my head and get in my mouth. I can change what's in my head if I keep putting the right thing in my mouth. I can change what's around me if I keep putting the right thing in my mouth. If I keep letting my head rule, then it's going to rule my mouth. But if I put in my mouth, Hallelujah. 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 Matthew chapter 10. I'm almost done. Matthew chapter 10. The word is your power. The word is your power. The word is your power. Because what I'm trying to show you, you ain't got to try to think nothing up. You ain't got to try to make nothing happen. There shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. The word is your power. That's your power right there. All you need to do is put it in your mouth. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I I I said Matthew 10, but go to Genesis 15. Because I got to, let's look at Abraham for a minute. God made Abraham a promise. But this thing is bothering Abraham. Because he's already older. How this thing going to happen? God, how are you going to do this? Watch this here, Helen. At Genesis 15, to verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. The word of the Lord, shout Ramah. The word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, what's the next thing? What's the first thing God told Abram? Fear not. Fear not, Abram. Don't you fear. I know it hadn't happened yet, and I know your age could be talking to you. I know your situations may be talking to you. I know things around you may be talking to you, Abram, but fear not. Don't let what you hadn't seen yet cause you to fear that it ain't going to happen. Fear not. Don't you fear, even though it looks crazy, sounds crazy. Nobody in your family never done it, Abram, but don't you fear. Fear not. Because if you get in fear, this fear is going to stop your faith from working. Fear will talk you out of the promises of God. Fear will talk you out of trusting God. Fear will get you not to trust the process. Abram, fear not. Watch this here. Watch this. Then he told him, Abram, I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. He's letting Abram know, don't you look to nobody but me. I am your shield and your reward. Abram, I will protect you. I will watch over you, Abram. I will govern your life. And I am your rewarder. Why did God have to tell Abram, I am your rewarder? God had to tell Abram, I'm your rewarder. Because there's a tendency that we have to look to other people to reward us. There's a tendency that we have that when God tells you to do something, subconsciously we look to them to reward us. Okay, okay, got real quiet. Let me, let me go on this side. When, when, when there's a tendency that when God tells you to do something, subconsciously you may look to who God told you to do for become your reward that you can go back and get a reward because of what you've done but God was telling Abram I'm your rewarder don't look to nobody to reward you but me because if you look to somebody else to pay you back or reward you, then you will be sadly disappointed because some people may not obey God like you think they do. Some people can God can talk to all day long and they'll turn a deaf ear from hearing from God. 
But if you just put your eyes on him as the rewarder, he know how to reach people that you don't know nothing about. He know how to get a hold of people who don't know you, who don't want nothing from you, who would just obey God and have nothing, have no strings attached. If you would just know that God is your rewarder, then he will put the people in your life who ain't going to ask nothing in return, who ain't going to try to look for you to do for them like you did for them, who would just obey God and don't want nothing from you but the best. If God told them to do it, they'll do it without no questions asked. They ain't coming back. They try to ask for it. They ain't coming back. They try to look for it. They ain't coming back for favoritism. Because sometimes strings can be attached. I'm doing what I'm doing because one day I'm looking for you to do it for me. And when you don't get it, who, oh, wait a minute, all, 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 you going to tell me no? You ain't going to, you, you ain't going to ask, you ain't going to give me what I ask you when, <laughs> you know, you know, I like stuff like that, you know. <laughs> I've I, I been messing with ladies since my husband. All I done done for you. You trying to tell me? Because subconsciously, that's how we think. And we think the reward is supposed to come from what we did and who we have did things for. There's a danger at times when you say you being a blessing. Because I got to ask myself, when I'm doing and when I'm being a blessing, they're not supposed to be nothing attached to it. Nothing. Nothing. If there's anything attached to it, Because God will tell you to do stuff. When I'm talking about to an enemy. Well, he told us, bless them that curse you. Do good by them who despitefully use you or have mistreated you. Pray for them. Because he wants you to understand he's your rewarder. And he wants you to understand that God, God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In other words, when he give, when he give, it's not anything attached to it but love. Love is the only thing that is attached to it. Love, love suffer no wrong. Love thinketh no evil. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is generous. Love don't have no kind of attachment to it. Are you with me here? He said, I am your reward. Watch this here. I'm closing. He said, I am the seeding that I'm the seeding great reward. Watch this here. Watch it as I'm closing. Watch this. Watch this. Good verse two. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me? Here we go. We end him with this. Seeing I go childless and the steward of my house of Elijah of Damascus. Go ahead, verse 3. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed below one born in my house. Verse 4, watch this here. And behold, the word of the Lord, a rhema, came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. It looked like the route you might need to go, but ain't the route I want you to go. See, when you say you want to please God, he'll have you to go the long route. There is no shortcuts to the blessing. There is no shortcuts. 
He'll have you to go all around. That look like there is no benefit at all in that. Watch this here. But watch this. Here we go. But he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels. In other words, God's, God is telling Abram, the promise is not going to come through somebody else for you. It's going to always come through you. It's going to always come through you. What I have for you is not going to come through someone else. It's going to come through you. It's going to come out of you. Watch this here. Look at verse, verse 5. Because notice verse 2 said, Abram said, seeing I go childless. That's all was in Abram's sight. Watch this, what he didn't have. And if that's all was in my sight, what I don't have, it's hard for me to trust the process on what I will have. Because if all was on my mind is what I don't have, it would be hard for me to conceive what I will have. So God knew that what he had to do to Abram, he had to change his sight. Because if he could change his sight, he can change his life. Watch this here. Look, look at verse 6. Look, no, verse 5. And he brought him forth. Go back to verse 5 as we close. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now. Come, come here. Come, you go ahead. Come, come here, Dignity. He brought, notice what the first thing he did to Abram. He had to bring Abram out of his tent. Some things you're not going to see when you stay in a place of settlement. I'm not going to be able to see what God wants me to see as long as I'm always in a place of comfort. He brought him forth. He brought him out of his tent. That's what Pastor Stevenson is doing right now, trying to bring you out your tents. What is a tent? The tent is the place you've built that covers you and keeps you. The tent was only a temporary place for Abram while he was on his journey. But it was never meant for him to be there forever. Some things you may have to tent for there for a little bit. But being, being putting up a tent for temporary don't mean I'm staying where this tent is at. Watch this here. He brought him forth. Then he told him, look now toward heaven. Tell the stars, if you're able to number them, so shall your seed be. What did God have to do? He had to get Abram to set his sight on something else. Every week that you come in this building, I'm trying to get you to set your sight on something else. I'm not trying to control your life. I know you're grown, and I know don't nobody tell you what to do. But all I'm trying to do is get you to put your eyes on something else. Because you can have your eyes so locked in on some things that has no profit, that has no benefit, that's not for your good. And if you're not watchful, you can be so locked in seeing I go childless. Because that's all Abram was looking at. So God had to Position Abram, look at the stars. If you can number them, so shall your seed be. I got to get you to look at things other than being childless. I got to get you to look at your future. You don't have them now, but if you keep looking at them long enough, if you keep counting, you'll lose sight of what you don't have. Oh, you missed that. If you keep looking at them, thank you. If you keep looking at them, 
and you keep numbering them, you'll lose sight of what you don't have. And it will create a whole new image in you to influence, to control, and to dominate what is not there. But I got to trust the process. Look at verse 6 as we close. Watch this here. Watch this here. As we close and watch this. My God, boy, I feel like having a revival. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Watch this. That changed Abram's whole state. It was now counted to Abram for righteousness. That what he believed, watch this, brought him into right standing with God. Not what he did, not how he acted, not what he didn't do. Just simply what he believed what God said brought him into right standing with God. And this is what he's telling us today. It ain't so much what you do or what you don't do that brings you into right standing. It's you believing in Jesus Christ himself. That brings you into a whole new place in God. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power, the privilege, and the right to become children of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Not by the will of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but the will of God. Hallelujah. Come on, stand with me. Let's give God praise. <laughs>